What the fuck is poppin', everybody? How we doing? Hope you're doing fantastic. I'm doing fantastic. Went to the gym, went to the beach. Super chill morning. Last night I had a fucking migraine. Um, there's nothing like a migraine. I literally puked six times. I don't know if that's TMI, but like it was so bad. Like I, I, it was, it was probably the worst four hours of my life, if I'm being honest, it was insane. I literally fell asleep on the bathroom floor. But anyway, The Mastery of Love. What a fucking book. What a fucking book this was. Um, so I read it. It's actually a pretty thick book. It looks tiny, but like, it took me a while. It took me a while. Um, so we're gonna get into that. And I basically just wrote down all the, the big takeaways that I took from it. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna rapid fire spit them at you. And I would really recommend you stay till the end one. So I don't feel like I'm in a rush to keep you stimulated and keep your attention. Um, because obviously this isn't gonna be the most fucking epic thrill packed video ever, but the information I learned from this book is seriously life changing. Um, it opened my eyes to everything. So let's get right into it. The first chapter is about accepting yourself um, and fully just like accepting the way you think, the way you look, accepting who you are for who you are. Like genuinely on a deep level, fully accept the way you are, the way you look, the way you dress, the way you laugh, the way you smile the way you talk to people, the way you go about connecting with people, accept yourself fully um, because we've been programmed to basically create an image. Um, and this is another part of the book where it talks about we've all been creating so many images our entire life. We have an image of ourselves for when we're around our parents, for when we're around our friends, for when we're at work. We're constantly putting on this facade of who we genuinely are and it's like, if you don't recognize this before it's too late, you're gonna be 40 years old, putting out an image your whole life where the, the authentic you and the image of you are so different, they're unrecognizable. So recognize what image you've been trying to create for yourself, who you're trying to be, and fully stop expecting yourself to be something that you're not and just fully approach everything from an authentic place of yourself. So then we dive into, we perceive everything with the emotional body. Um, basically the emotional body is basically a filter uh, on how we see the world around us. Um, you know, when kids didn't like something, they didn't question it with their human mind they would just feel it, and if they liked the feeling or didn't like the feeling, that would determine whether or not they stay around. Um, so everything's interpreted by your emotional body, and then your human mind is the thing that tries to rationalize and justify the things. Um, shyness is just the fear of expressing your true self. So people all the time will say, oh, I'm just kind of shy. The only reason you'd ever be shy is because you're living in a state of fear of expressing yourself. Um, and this book dives so deep into fear and love. I am gonna to touch on it in a little bit. You, it blew my mind, it blew my mind. So then it goes into emotional poison. Emotional poison, so every single time you've been hurt, which I'm assuming has been a couple times if you're a human like everyone else, you've probably been hurt, whether it be by a significant other, your parents, a friend, you have emotional wounds that have never fully healed. So. It's called poison because once you're poisoned, you're gonna subconsciously poison everyone around you with your emotional damage because you've never allowed yourself to fully heal. And this is why everyone is so toxic nowadays because they don't realize that we all just have emotional wounds that we haven't healed from. So we're going to carry that burden onto someone else because we don't know what else to do with it because we look for everyone but ourselves to blame when it comes to emotional fear and pain. Um, so imagine one day you wake up and all of your emotional wounds are gone, literally all of them. Every person that lied to you, hurt you, stabbed you in the back, you fully forget about them and you are woken up 
like it's your first day on earth again, but this time you're 20 years old, you're 18 years old, and you have the ability to love. You have the ability to be conscious. Imagine how you would approach your relationships, your friendships, everyone on the fucking street if you've never been rejected, if you've never been hurt, if you've never been cheated on. Imagine how you would approach life from a place of love. And this book is literally all about love. It's why it's called The Mastery of Love. Because everything leads back to fucking love. And I've read a lot of books. And all of them talk about. To be the happiest version of yourself. You need to find love within yourself. You have to have love coming out of you in order to be happy. Everyone on the planet can love you. But if you don't have love coming out of you, you're never going to be fully happy. Crazy, right? Crazy. Um... We're all full of poison because we are raised with an image of perfection, which isn't a thing. Perfection is not real. Everything is perfect. But the image of perfection we've created is not real because everything already is perfect. Does that make sense? Perfection is not real because we have an image of what it should, what the fuck? We have an image of what it should be rather than accepting that everything already is perfect. Never place your happiness in the hands of someone else. Happiness always needs to come from within. So as soon as you start relying on someone else to make you happy, as soon as you get good news and you depend on this other person's reaction to your good news to make you happy, rather than allowing the good news to make you happy yourself, this is when you find yourself in a very slippery slope. Say you got a promotion at your job and you, you want to go home and you want to tell your significant other, you want to be like, yo, I got the promotion. And they're not in a good mood that day. You know, they're just not in a good mood. And you're like, oh, that's cool. I'm glad. I'm glad you got that. And then you're, you have such high expectations. You're like, why the fuck aren't you happy? And then you don't allow yourself to celebrate your achievement because of their emotions, their emotional state. So, never put your happiness in the hands of someone else, ever, ever. A relationship should compliment you, not complete you, always. Um, fear or love dictate all of your decisions. Love has no obligations, fear has many. Love has no expectations, fear has many. With all your decisions you're making in your day-to-day -day life, every single micro decision, you are either choosing your decisions from a place of love or from a place of fear. Um, scarcity or abundance. Like a lot of people make their decisions. A lot of people make their decisions from a place of scarcity, fear. They don't want to lose their job. They don't want to go bankrupt. Um, they don't want to take a big risk and make themselves uncomfortable. They uh, choose the safe route rather than thinking in abundance from a place of love where money is always coming to me, love is always coming to me, I will always be okay because I have myself. That's that's an abundance mindset. Love, love is unconditional. Love has no expectations. Love has no control. I love you for who you are and you are free to be who you are. That is love. We, in a fearful relationship, you put all these rules on the other person because you're scared. You don't want them to hurt you like you've been hurt in the past. So in a relationship, when you set boundaries, it's simply because you're operating from a place of fear which is understandable. And this is why it's just like, honestly, I think every relationship, if you're getting into a relationship, you should both read this book or listen to this video. Um, because you should never be in a relationship with someone where you have any bit of uncertainty and anxiety. Like if this person's not on your emotional intelligence and emotional awareness level, you shouldn't be with them because it's a recipe for disaster. Um, With fear, you create an image of what that person should be, and when they break that image, you judge them. More image creating. With fear relationships, you are saying, this is what I expect from you, and if you are not this, I'm going to be upset with you. Rather than, if you love the person, 
you allow them to be who they are. You love them for who they are. You say, I don't care what you do because I know that you love me and I love you. In the track of fear, we create rules for the other person to protect themselves. Oh, I already said this, fuck. These rules affect the quality of communication between us because when we are afraid, we lie. You know how in like a toxic relationship, when you do, when you do something that your partner didn't like and they keep bringing it up and up and up and you're like, dude, we've talked about this 20 times. Why are you still bringing this up? Like, I get it. I did that. Yeah, I'm sorry. In the track of love, there is justice. If you make a mistake, you only have to pay once for that mistake. In the track of fear, you keep punishing them for the same crime over and over and over. But in the track of love, you only pay once. We talk about it? Okay, it's done. Think of love like tennis. You have a teammate and your objective is to win and to have fun together. If you have a partner who tries to control how you play, and says, no, play like this. You're not going to have any more fun. You won't want to play with that partner anymore. In a relationship, it's not about control. It's not always about winning. It's about having fun. You are playing the game to have fun. You are playing the game of love to have fun. Uh, in this book, it basically talks all about that relationships should always be lighthearted and fun. Obviously, in moments, take it seriously because you guys, to, like, are in a commitment together. But you should never be completely dependent on the other person's emotions for your happiness. Um, it should always be lighthearted and fun and never that serious. I don't care who told you that relationship should be super serious. Think back to when we were kids. We were just wanting to have fucking fun. You know, that's all we wanted to do and then society programmed us to think that, oh, we gotta, we gotta grow up. We gotta start taking things seriously now. Just a societal program. No one's, no, we don't have to grow up. We really don't. We really fucking don't. And I, you can still be a functioning member of society while having a childlike mindset. It's not impossible. I do it. I have fun all the fucking time. I don't take shit seriously. I still make jokes, like corny fucking sex jokes. I don't care. Um, a part of growing up is really just unlearning. A part of finding yourself is really just unlearning all the things that you've been forced to know and have fun. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. When you have the perfect relationship with yourself and your body, you can love freely. You can give your love with no conditions and without fear. This is why it's so important to build that relationship with yourself first, because when you are okay with yourself, you accept yourself. You get rid of, you, you don't necessarily get rid of your emotional poison and your emotional pain. You accept your emotional poison and emotional pain. Because yeah, it happened, but I'm not going to let fear of it happening again dictate or jurisdict any of my future decisions because I'm going to lead from a place of love because I am love. I'm not doing it for you. I'm not gonna lead from a place of love for you. I'm gonna do it for me because I know I deserve to be happy and I deserve to love and I deserve to be loved and I, everyone around me deserves to feel love regardless of how they've treated you. Our emotions act like a filter of how we see our reality. Rain is rain, there is nothing to interpret, but you are going to see the rain according to your emotional body. If you're angry, you're going to see the world in a reflection of your anger. If you are jealous, you're going to see the world in a reflection of envy. You're gonna look at everything with envy and say, ah, fuck you, ah, why don't I have that? Recognize that your reality is completely a reflection of your internal world. Forgiveness is an act of self-love. We have learned to suffer just to show the abuser, look what you've done to me. I'm hurting just to say, look at what you've done to me. It's kind of funny, but that's the truth of it. We literally hurt ourselves. We literally allow ourselves to be in pain just to show the person who caused this pain, like, look what you did to me. So we suffer just to try to make them feel worse, right? I've done it. You've probably done it. So stop, stop like trying to make, when people do some shitty shit to you, like totally be on face because what they did to you is not a reflection of you at all. It's fully a reflection of them and their emotional body. Um, forgiveness is an act of self-love. Remember that, remember that. 
when you forgive yourself, when you forgive anyone, it's an act of self-love. No matter how shitty the thing is that that person did to you, forgive them. Because you're not forgiving them for them, you're forgiving them so that you don't have to deal with the fucking burden. Love coming out of you is the only way to heal your emotional body. Like I've said, acceptance, unconditional love for yourself, no longer reject yourself. Forgive and accept yourself for exactly who you are is the only way to heal your emotional body. Heaven and hell are here now. You don't have to wait to go to heaven or to hell. If you take responsibility for your own life, then your future is in your hands. Heaven is a vibration, hell is a vibration. And 95% of the people on earth are living in hell right now because they've been programmed to live in hell. Knowledge is nothing more than a description of the dream and the dream isn't real, so knowledge isn't real. Shit's so crazy. At the end of the book, it started talking about so much woke shit. I'm like, yo, that's crazy. Knowledge has nothing to do with freedom. Wisdom is freedom. The freedom to think what you want to think, believe what you want to believe, and live as you want to live. Knowledge has nothing to do with wisdom or freedom. Wisdom is freedom. The ability to be as you want to be. When you heal your own mind, when you heal your emotional body, you get you recognize all these societal programs, you can break free of the dream. And when you become awake, you cross a line you can never cross back over. Once you realize that this is all just a dream, you are still dreaming because you cannot avoid the dream. But this time, you know that you are dreaming. And knowing that you can enjoy the, knowing that, knowing that, you can either enjoy the dream or suffer the dream. Knowing all of that information that I just said to you, that's probably the best summary of this book you're ever gonna fucking hear on the internet. Knowing that, everything I just said, you have the power to heal your emotional body, lead from a place of love, and you recognize that your reality is completely jurisdicted by you in your emotional body. You have the power to create your reality. And your thoughts don't create your reality, your beliefs create your reality. You can say, yeah, I love myself, but if you don't fully believe that, you need to fully believe that. You need to fully believe it. Your beliefs will create your reality, your beliefs will change your vibration, and your vibration determines what you attract. I can't fucking express to you how in control of your life you are. I really can't. Like, I feel like a lot of this has to do with music. I'm getting a little off track here, but ever since I started listening, to, like, I don't know if you guys can hear this shit in the back. Like, throughout my whole work day, I'll just have a frequency playing in the back and I feel so connected, so grounded. I feel like I'm in a place of love. It's just beautiful. It's fully just beautiful. Um, rather than like super low vibrational rap that's like programming your subconscious in a negative way, be very intentional about everything you do, the music you're listening to, the people you're talking to, because your environment will determine whether or not you're in hell or heaven. Because if not everyone that's in your circle is participating in heaven, you're not gonna be able to reach heaven. So be super intentional about who you allow into your circle because your environment can be heaven or it can be hell and it's very much up to you. We have the power to live on heaven on earth, regardless of where you live, we all have the power. All right, I love you guys. I hope you stayed for that whole video. I'm gonna put this on Spotify as well. Um, I love you guys so much. Um, let's have a fucking day. I hope you kind of sit with all that information because that's a lot. Really sit there and internalize it, yeah? All right, guys, I love you. I'll see you in the next video.